as he said, as I read the ad, he can save 60 some or some millions of dollars by changing that. Guys, look, they think differently than we do. <laughs> they have a different view of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact of the matter is that uh, in a state that has always been such a leader in education with the lowest class ratio in the United States of America, the idea of moving backwards in order for about uh, 1,400 people to get a tax cut seems to me close to, I won't use the words, I was use uh, not, not <laughs> 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 I know Vermont well enough to know that's not the Vermont way. I know this state well enough to know that's not how you've done business. I've worked with a guy named Stafford who broke his neck to get people to college. He was a Republican, the Stafford Long. I've worked with a guy who thought that the answer was to give everybody a chance, the answer was to let everybody get out, to educate us more, the danger of the Republican Party. These policies make absolutely no sense economically, but they make perfect sense when you look at the Republican ideology that has nothing to do with the needs and concerns of the middle class. Not because they don't like you, but they don't think you play a particularly big part. They don't think it's the answer for American future. What is their vision? Their vision is about an emboldened Wall Street and big business. They literally believe that. They're not bad guys. They genuinely believe it. It might be worth trying if we hadn't tried it twice before <laughs> and seen the results. Our vision, Peter's vision for America, rest on research, innovation, new energy policy, modernizing our infrastructure, and once again having the best educated population in the world, and personal freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why the president set a goal. And we're going to meet the goal with the help of that delegation. Set a goal to double the amount of renewable energy we generate in America by the year end of 2012. To sound like a geek, that's going from 28 gigawatts to 56 gigawatts. To put it in ordinary terms, that means 16.7 million homes. Their entire energy needs for an entire year be able to be met by that increase. That means every single state in New England, including New York and New Jersey, would not have to spend a single solitary penny on any energy other than renewable energy. These guys oppose it. That's why the president, that's why the president thinks we should make things here in America do. The president's given a third strange notion. <laughs> Seriously. Look, I can understand these guys that they look, Joe, we want to keep those four tax rates and encourage companies to go abroad. But we also think we should have similar encouragement to keep people here. I get that. I wouldn't agree with it. I get it. But I don't get it then voting against a 30% tax credit for windmill manufacturing come to Vermont or a solar uh, uh, company come to Vermont give them a 30% tax credit if they build here guys these guys don't think like we do <laughs> look we're setting a goal to make sure the United States remains and grows as the world's hub of research and development to be the nation that finds the cure for cancer, the nation that discovers breakthrough clean energy technologies that can create millions and millions of new jobs. Yeah. And Peter is doing this right here. He's going along with us. He knows the innovation of research and the Vermont's economic future. But you can't take that without a new infrastructure. That's why he's been working to bring the high CD in at every corner of this state. You know, you don't have to worry if Peter is going to fight for small, bit, small business. He gets it. These guys who say they're pro-business, they voted to get 16 small business actors that are consequential. 16, these guys say. And almost every Republican voted against them. Makes you wonder whether or not they're really in this about getting us out of the hole we're in, or they're in this to just defeat, defeat the other party. Ladies and gentlemen, we think this election is about the next generation. They made it clear they think it's only about one of them, the next election. Peter knows what it's like to try to meet a payroll. 
to grow a company, to build something from the ground up. That's when the state legislature, we felt, helped pass bill to expand small business access to credit. And I might add, we believe fiercely, fiercely, in the last time what we think America grows in, and that's respecting the individual freedom. These guys don't want a government big enough to help start up companies, but they want a government small enough to be able to get into the bedroom. These guys, not a joke, think about where they are. Think about everything they view as a controlling social issue. Think of the dichotomy between what they believe the role of government is. They say it should not be engaged in creating jobs. Most candidates around the country have been campaigning with actually like the woman in Nevada, but not only her, but others. They're saying, my job as Senator of Congress is not to create jobs. Government shouldn't be engaged in it. They do say their job in government is to make sure your conduct in the privacy of your bedroom, who you choose to love and not love, should be left up to the government. Ladies and gentlemen, just as you're beginning to turn this country around, just as you're beginning to see the light and under the policies of the quote George W. Bush Republicans, they want to walk back. They want to take us back. But we're not going to let them go back. You're not going to let them go back. And I'm looking at all you students out there. You know better than guys my age here. You know better than anybody in this audience. There's not a damn thing this country can't do. There's not a single solitary thing your generation is capable of. There's nothing, nothing that can keep America if we let it have a free reign from leading the world again in the 21st century. It's in your DNA. The neighborhood I come from, I don't know anybody who's ever accepted being second or third. What do these guys think is going on in China right now? What do they think is going on in Germany and Brazil? Do you think they're saying the way we need the world in the 21st century is to cut education, is not invest in research development, not give startup money to new enterprises? We've already brought $300 billion off the sideline of private capital into these new ventures. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what you have to do. This election is more important than the one you elected Barack and I. And the reason I say that is not that I'm not grateful what you did for us. I am eternally grateful. But folks, had we lost that last election, by now the entire country would have had no doubt about why they were in such horrible shape. But ladies and gentlemen, the fact of getting this car out of the ditch, as the president said, it's dented, it needs a lot of body work, <laughs> and it needs a new form of energy to propel it. But ladies and gentlemen, not only that or that, if we allow them to push it back in the ditch, it's going to be a long time before we keep the promise we made to ourselves and to one another. I'll end where I began. I got elected when I was 29 years old. I was an IBMC kid from, I guess, technically lower middle class side from the line of the I was idealistic and I was hopeful. But here I am after being elected to the Senate seven times and Vice President once. I am more certain. I give you my word as a body. I am more certain. I am more confident. I am more optimistic about the ability of the United States of America to lead the world in a positive direction in the 21st century than I ever have been. It's hard. But we're beginning to make a change. So I'm counting on you. I'm counting on you. Don't let them, as the president says, take the keys back to the, to the car. Don't let them turn this around because it'll be another decade before we're able to get back on the road again. Ladies and gentlemen, there's not a single thing this country can't do. And to your great good fortune, and I mean this sincerely, you have four of the quality candidates I've seen in my career. And none more quality than this guy right here. Yeah.